Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. In this lab, we are going to configure static routing to allow PC1 and PC2 to communicate with each other. Static routing, as opposed to dynamic routing, involves manually configuring routes to networks that you want to reach. As a network grows, it quickly becomes unfeasible to manually configure both primary and backup routes to each destination network. However, for small networks like this example here, it is no problem. Even in large networks, you will often want to use static routes in combination with dynamic routing protocols like EIGRP and OSPF, which we will practice in future labs. Try to complete the lab yourself first, then continue watching if you have trouble, or watch the video after to check your solution. If you haven't learned the required commands to complete this lab yet in your studies, feel free to watch this video to learn them. Note that no static routes have been pre-configured in this lab. I have only configured the default gateways of PC1 and PC2, being the G01 interfaces of their respective routers. Step one is to configure the G00 and G01 interfaces of R1 and R2 according to the network diagram and enable the interfaces. There are three subnets in this network, 192.168.1.0/24, which includes PC1, Switch1, and R1's G01 interface, also 10.0.0.0/24, which includes the G00 interfaces of R1 and R2, also, 192.168.2.0/24, which includes PC2, Switch2, and R2's G01 interface. Let's configure R1 first. Enable conf t interface G00, IP address 10.0.0.1, 255.255.255.0, no shutdown. Okay, so that's R1's G00 interface, which is connected to R2. Now let's do the G01 interface. Interface G01, IP address 192.168.1.1, 255.255.255.0, no shutdown. Now let's configure R2's interfaces. Enable, conf t, interface G00, IP address 10.0.0.2.255.255.255.0 No shutdown. Interface G01 IP address 192.168.2.1.255.255.255.0 No shutdown. That's all for step 1. Step 2 is to ping from PC1 to R1's G01 interface then progressively ping toward PC2 and see which pings succeed and which fail. Let's try that. First, R1's G01 interface, ping 192.168.1.1. It works. Next, R1's G00 interface, ping 10.0.0.1. It works too. Now let's try R2's G00 interface, ping 10.0.0.2. This ping fails. I won't bother pinging beyond here, those pings will fail as well. Why is that? Well, for a ping to succeed, you need two-way connectivity. PC1 needs to be able to reach the destination, and the destination needs to know how to reach PC1 to send the reply to the ping. The first two pings we sent satisfy both requirements, thus they worked. PC1 and R1's G01 interface are part of the same network, thus they can reach each other. PC1 isn't part of the same network as R1's G00 interface, but it sends the packet to its default gateway, which I pre-configured as R1's G01 interface. Then R1, of course, knows the destination because it's one of its other interfaces. It can then send the ping back to PC1, 
which is again directly connected to the same network as its G01 interface. That's why the first two pings worked. Now, why did the third ping fail? Let's think about the path the ping takes. PC1 sends the ping to its default gateway, R1's G01 interface. The destination is 10.0.0.2, which R1 knows the way to because it's part of the same network as its G00 interface, the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network. So it sends the ping out of its G00 interface toward R2. Now, the ping reaches R2. However, R2 doesn't know how to send the reply back to PC1. R2 has no route back to the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network because we haven't configured any routes yet and it's not a directly connected network. So that's why the ping fails. I'll go on R2 quickly to check. Exit, show IP route. As you can see, the 192.168.1.0 network is not present. Now let's move on to step three. Basically, we are going to do the same thing, but from PC2. Can you guess which pings will work? Let's check on PC2. First, ping 192.168.2.1, R2's G01 interface. It works. Next, ping 10.0.0.2, R2's G00 interface. It works also. Now, ping 10.0.0.1, R1's G00 interface. It fails. This is for the same reason as before. PC2 sends the ping to R2, which then sends it to R1, but R1 doesn't have a route back to PC2's subnet in its routing table, so the ping ends there. Step four is to configure static routes on R1 and R2 to allow PC1 to reach PC2 and vice versa. We should also make sure we configure the routes to the subnets, meaning 192.168.1.0 slash 24 and 192.168.2.0 slash 24, rather than directly to the other PC, meaning 192.168.1.11 slash 32 and 192.168.2.12 slash 32. In this very small network, we only have to create one static route on each router. On R1, we need a route to 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And on R2, we need a route to 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Okay, let's do that on R1 first. Exit. Now we create a static route with the command IP route. Now I'll use the question mark to show what comes next. First is the destination prefix. In this case, it's 192.168.2.0. Question mark again. Destination prefix mask. It's slash 24, so that equals 255.255.255.0. Question mark one more time. Now we have a list of options, but really there are just two. The option at the top of the list, forwarding router's address, means the next hop address in the route. Make sure this is an address the router knows how to get to. If the router can't reach the next hop address, it obviously can't reach the destination. If we choose this option, the next hop address would be R2's G00 interface, 10.0.0.2. The other options are to specify an interface, meaning the exit interface we will send the packets out of on the way to the destination. If we choose this option, we will use gigab gigabit ethernet 0, 0. Let's go with the first option of the next hop IP address, 10.0.0.2. Okay, that's it. Now let's check the routing table. Do show IP route. Here, with an S indicating static, we see our route to the 192.168.2.0 slash 24 network via 10.0.0.2, the next hop address. Since we're looking at the table anyway, 
Notice these other routes have C or L next to them. C refers to a connected network. In this case, the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network and 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. L refers to a local address on the router itself, 10.0.0.1 and 192.168.1.1, the IP addresses of the G00 and G01 interfaces. Okay, now let's configure the route on R2. IP route 192.168.1.0 255.255.255.0 And now let's configure the exit interface instead of the next hop address just to try it out. G00. Okay, now we should be able to ping from PC1 to PC2. Let's go on PC1 and try it out. Ping 192.168.2.12 the first ping or two may fail, but we should be able to reach PC2. There we go. The ping worked. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeremy's IT Lab. I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.